everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new if you are then hey I'm Marie I'm 21 years old and I make loads of videos about mental health on Mondays and then a normal video every Thursday so if you're interested subscribe I've never done this before where I'm like subscribe straight away <laughs> but I see other people do it and I'm like yeah sorry there's some fluff in here today I thought we'd have a good old-fashioned chin wag and basically I asked for some questions on Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram I'm gonna plug it here follow me on Instagram I'm nearly at 10k what are you saying um <laughs> That was so cringy. Oh. If you are interested in being in one of these videos, then I do literally all of my YouTube stuff on my Instagram, so go give it a go give it a follow, go give it a sneak peek, who knows? And Albie's here. Feeling better. Feeling a bit sorry for himself, but better. Say hi Albie. I'm checking just to see because mum says she's washing, but she doesn't know where she's put on. I haven't got your jeans. Guys, what do we feel about the headband? I can't tell if I like it. Think I do, don't know if I do. <laughs> Let me know. So I'm literally just gonna go through all the questions that you guys asked and answer some of them. So let's go straight on into it. And as always, I just wanna say before I start, I'm not a professional. I don't have any kind of mental health training. I'm literally just a girl who's struggled with her own mental health and wants to help others, so. Deuces. So the first question I'm going to answer is, do you think we will ever live in a world that doesn't stigmatise mental health? And honestly, I don't think we will as like a consecutive. I know that's not very positive, but I really don't think that there will be a massive amount of movement. Like we do, like people say that we made like loads of progress for mental health and we have to a certain extent, but it's still massively stigmatised, like different disorders are so stigmatised, people don't even know about them. Um, there's such a lack of funding for mental health uh, and that just all plays into the stigma game. Um, that's why like, I really credit people and the media when they do cover mental health kind of subjects because it's so important to kind of get it into mainstream media and not just talk about depression and anxiety but to talk about separate different symptoms and disorders because they need to be talked about and honestly I don't think that I think the movement that we made is great possibly we'll live in a in a time where mental health is less stigmatized I think it'll be less stigmatized as opposed to like completely abolished like the stigma um, I don't know though. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think we'll actually live in a world one time where there's no stigma about mental health? Because I'm not sure. Someone said, I really struggle with expressing how I feel to my therapist. Like I can't put it into words, any advice. I totally get what you mean when you say that because it is so hard to open up to someone after so long. Um, putting things into words is a really difficult thing to do. Honestly, I was like, I could not explain how I felt for so long and talking from experience I felt exactly the same about like not being able to like open up to someone completely. I don't know who's shouting outside. It's like boys playing football. Fun. In terms about putting things into words I would say the best thing you can do is try and figure it out for yourself before you try and talk to someone else about it. Like I used to get a piece of paper and literally just write and they didn't make any sense or I would like film myself. I literally used to film myself about how I felt at that moment and that would really help me kind of be able to verbalize what I was feeling. Um, writing is a really good way to do it because you can literally like word vomit on the page and then make sense of it after. It's like when I used to do my English essays at school, I used to write out what I thought straight away and then I'd go back and try and force it to make sense um, and that's what the same thing that I did with my mental health because I remember one time someone was like explain how you feel and I literally just got a pen and scribbled on a piece of paper and was like this is how I feel and I know that that isn't words but it's still a way of communicating to someone 
in terms of your therapist i would say to her like look i'm really struggling with trying to verbalize to you how i actually feel like i don't know how i feel um do you have any tips because one thing that we learned in dpt was how to spot emotions because for so long like literally so long i would feel something and not know what I was actually feeling like was I feeling guilty was I feeling sad was I feeling angry and it turns out that like a lot of the time when you're feeling an emotion you're actually there's two emotions and you're feeling the secondary emotion so say if I was feeling sad and then angry I'd, I'd kind of express the anger and not know why I was being angry but it turned out that I was being angry because I felt sad if that makes sense so a lot of the times therapists will have tips and try and help you to verbalize things or or give you like a prompt in order to speak um hopefully you've got a therapist which is very supportive and that you feel that you can speak to because that's the main thing is that knowing that you have that safe space to talk about things and they won't go any further um and that you'll just get help with it during that time so i would say either like write it down tell her communicate to her as much as you can in any way and therapists pick up on these things she probably already knows that you're finding it difficult um to talk to her so i wouldn't worry too much and i'd just say if you can't figure it out by yourself then just communicating with her that you can't communicate with her is enough someone said do you ever feel like you don't want to heal because you're comfortable being sad and i don't feel that anymore because i'm comfortable where i am now but a hundred percent I used to feel that way and I tell you what the reason you feel that way is because being sad is easy it's an easy thing to be <laughs> look at Albie in the back just shaking his booty mm -hmm. um, and I know that's not the nicest thing to hear but it's true once you're sad you can turn like I used to think it didn't matter what happened in my day I would always be able to turn around and say like I don't care because I don't care like it's easy not to care when you're sad and it's easier to not have responsibilities or like have to deal with actual life because you have this kind of it's like an escapism from real life you don't have to deal with real life because you're you're just thinking oh I can turn to this if this goes wrong or I know that I don't really actually care about this because I'm really sad and it is a sad place to be in even though I'm saying it's like an easy thing to be um, I'm not saying that that it's a nice thing to be in um, I'd say the best thing to do is you have to force yourself to do things that you wouldn't want to do and you have to decide to recover every single day and that's my main thing and my main goal and where it's got me today is that every day I wake up and I decide to do something that will aid to my recovery whether it depends like whether it's small and it just means I have to get out of bed and have a shower that day but I don't do anything else or if it's something big and it's like I'm gonna go out and do this or I'm gonna force myself to do mindfulness and force myself to go out for a walk and leave the house um, that kind of thing is where you start to feel better and once you feel better you'll understand that being safe and being sad is not where you want to be even though we think it's comfortable it's actually a very uncomfortable place to be in and not even just for you but for the people around you as well if they if if you're sad it's it makes it hard for other people to really engage with you and try and make you feel better but i think though the fact that you're recognizing that being in a sad space is comforting for you is really important because you have to expand your comfort zone you have to expand it you don't want to jump out of it and get rid of it you just want to expand it once you start expanding your comfort zone um your life will get so much better honestly um i'm really sad to hear that you don't want to get better or that you feel that you don't want to get better because honestly recovery is so much better than living a sad life honestly it's so much better so i really hope that you find the strength in order which is inside you but to really try and recover 
and just do little things and find happiness in the little things because that's what's really important. Someone asked how am I feeling and I'm actually feeling really good. Yep, yeah, I said it, I'm feeling really good, I'm feeling positive, I'm feeling less anxious. Um, I've just had my first week like fully back at work and it went wow. Um, I'm just content and it feels so nice to have like a basic life back. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm so happy to be able to say that, honestly. <laughs> Someone asked, do you find it hard to support others going through a mental health crisis while you're trying to recover? And of course, of course I do. Like, it's, it's, it's hard because recovery is a balance between being selfish and being selfless. So understanding that you come first in your life, but also understanding that you have to be grateful and you have to focus on things bigger than you in order to recover. So it's that really hard balance. And when you're trying to help someone else trying to recover, this part goes like this. And you're, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, and you're not taking time for yourself. I feel like that's, in my, in my case anyway, like I feel like that's what's happened to me before. And so when you think about it in that respect, all you have to do is try and balance it out again and try and focus on you a bit. Like it doesn't mean that you have to be completely selfish and not see the other person or not talk to the other person, but it means that you have to do things that you enjoy. You can't pour from an empty cup and that is, the biggest, like one of the best quotes I think when it comes to recovery is that you can't pour from an empty cup. So if you're drained, if you're completely exhausted and like mentally exhausted and fatigued, you're not gonna be able to support the other person. So you have to, you have to find that balance and you have to realize that if you're okay, then you can give more help to the other person. It doesn't help if both of you are just in, stuck in this really hard crisis. If you want to see the other person better, then you have to try and be better yourself. And I think and just remembering the selfish and selfless in recovery is can aid you towards anything, really. If you're completely giving all the time, you're not going to be able to recover and you're not going to be able to better yourself or the other person but if you're being completely selfish again you won't be able to help the other person but you're also not going to help yourself because you're not going to get anywhere if you're just being completely selfish someone said advice on how to accept your body during rec during recovery and through the weight changes um i know you a lot of you guys have noticed that my weight has kind of fluctuated in the past few months and i'm not going to go into it just because I don't really feel comfortable doing that, but the way to accept it or the way I'm learning to accept it is just by realizing all the positive things that your body can actually do for you now that it couldn't do before. Um, I know for me that like I try to avoid looking in mirrors or wearing things that I don't feel comfortable in, but at the same time, like I like to dress nicely because before I would just cover up my body in like baggy jumpers and like just not take care, not take pride in myself. It doesn't, it doesn't come easily, but if you're deciding today I'm gonna put on a nice outfit, like it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It can just be a nice thing that you feel comfortable in, that you feel good in, then it really helps with your body image because you're like, I feel good in this. I feel comfortable and pretty and that's really important um also i just say and i know it's hard but like try and think of the bigger picture that's what i'm trying to do is that like my body is now able to like i've just noticed that like i'm able to go and do things like i can actually go out for a full day and see people and not be completely exhausted by the end of it i can go and walk my dog and do it for the right reasons as opposed to the wrong reasons and like my body is aiding me in that and once you realise the bigger picture, I think with every mental health problem looking at the bigger picture is one of the most important things and 
and just not being so inside your head because I think that's what mental illness does to you. It does, it makes you selfish, it makes you just focus on your own problems and not think about anything else. But if you're doing things and like seeing people and enjoying life, then it makes it so much easier because you're not just focused on what you look like or how you look. It's just, I've had a, like I've noticed for me, it's like I've had a really nice day today. Did I think about how I looked? Yes. But at the end of the day, I've had such a good day that I don't even care. And if you get to that stage, then I think it's really positive and it's going to make good improvements. And also you've got to realise is that you're not, if, you, if you're talking about gaining weight, you're not gaining weight, you're, you're putting back the weight that you lost. It's not like you're adding to what you were, it's that you're adding to become what you were. And that's the most important thing to remember. It's not like you're just gaining weight, it's that you're gaining the weight that you lost and you're gaining the life that you lost again. Someone asked, when you get really bad periods, at the time she means mentally so like m bad mental episodes does it ever get better or does it stay like that and honestly it does get better and it's horrible to hear that like it just does get better but you have to wait it out because things don't stay like that forever like your mood is constantly fluctuating whether it's daily or weekly or monthly you've got to remember that there's so many different aspects which will affect your mood, like the weather, like I think the weather is such a massive thing that affects people's moods. You've got to remember that if you're on your period, if you're stressed at school, if you're stressed at work, so many things affect yourself mentally and you and you just got to remember that it does get better. Honestly, it's, it's shit to hear that it does get better, like it's shit to just hear that, but it will be proven because you're not gonna stay this way forever. It can't be constantly down here. There will be times where it lifts up and in them times you've gotta relish them and remind yourself that it does get better because you won't stay down forever. Honestly, you really won't. And I know it feels like you will, but you won't. Someone asked, how do you cope with what others say about you? And someone else said, how do you cope with hate online? And having hate online and hate in person is such a hard thing to overcome and honestly I'd say it takes time. I am still not, at, I would say I'm very good at dealing with hate but I still, it still does affect me, it's not like I can just switch off and it not affect me. There are times where people's comments have stuck with me and like nearly forced me to like stop YouTube or like honestly do that kind of things just because of their stupid comments and what you've got to realize is that you are a person and you are a solid soul okay and if you listen to these other people they lower your vibrations they and they lower everything that you have built yourself up on i think reminding yourself that you are a person with your own free will is massively important and I know that sounds weird but hear me out <laughs> if you are a person with your own free will then you have the ability to rise up above everyone else you have the ability to make the decision will this affect me and honestly it feels like you don't have this decision but you really do and I know it's hard especially if these people are close to you um, but toxic people just ruin lives they really do but i think i can rise up above this i can make the choice to rise above what everyone else is saying about me and being able to think i'm not gonna let this affect me is so empowering and you just gotta think i actually do not give a shit about you <laughs> and it's like such a breath of fresh air when you do that because you're like i am a strong independent person who doesn't need other people's opinions in order to shape how I see myself because they don't matter, I don't care about them and all I care about is me and bettering myself and I know what I'm doing is cool and fine and I don't need their opinion to shape what I'm doing. It's honestly so empowering once you get to that point because you're like, fuck them. Honestly, fuck them, because you're better than that. You don't need to use, like, toxicity. You don't have a massive ego. You're just being you. You're doing your own thing. And as long as you think and you know that you're doing the right thing, fuck them. <laughs> Honestly, fuck
fuck them. You do you, boo. You do you. How do you find hope during the days you struggle most? Love you always. I love you too, Ari. Ari? Yeah, I think it's Ari. Best thing I have found that helps me when I'm struggling is to force myself to be grateful for something. And I know this sounds a bit like, oh, I'm so grateful, like I'm such a good person. Like, no, I'm not talking about bullshit. I'm talking about genuine, I feel grateful for these things. Like, I used to keep a diary when I was in hospital and every single day I'd force myself to be grateful for something or bless something. And when I say bless something, it would be like, I'm blessing this person for either something good or for something that they needed. Like I'd say I'm blessing this person because at this time they really need some hope and I wanna send that into the universe. But honestly, when you're feeling bad, if you feel grateful, you can't feel bad because even if it's for five minutes, you're like, I am grateful for this and it honestly, it makes you appreciate the little things if you force yourself to have gratitude for something and there will always be something that you're grateful for. Even if it's something tiny, like I used to say like, I'm grateful that it was sunny today because that meant that I could walk outside and that meant that I was not locked inside and it kind of is like a chain reaction. Instead of having negative spirals of like, spirals of decline where you're I feel shit about this because of this blah 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 it's like no I feel grateful for this because this happened and it meant that this could happen and once you get the hang of it it's so easy and you find yourself doing it throughout the day and there will be less days where you're really sh like feeling shit and honestly it does give you hope because you're like there are things in the world to be grateful for and honestly, it's so important to find happiness and hope within yourself. I read a quote which said, happiness doesn't come from things or objects. It, it doesn't come from people or things, it comes from within. And once you find happiness on, it doesn't have to be every day. Like I'm not saying this it happens every day, but if you have moments where you can find happiness just by yourself, then it's so empowering again. It's, it's finding ways to really better yourself and further yourself that will benefit you in the long run, honestly. Um, being grateful is one of the best things I've learned in recovery. Guys, all comment down below something that you're grateful for. I know this sounds like some like, like, oh, I'm a therapist. No, I'm not. Like, like honestly, if I could, get everyone to like comment something that they're grateful for it would really mean a lot to me because once you see other people's to it, it inspires you to do it as well so comment something down below that you're grateful for I will do it too <laughs> and we'll see we'll just like be queens am I right hashtag gratitude queens am I right yeah <laughs> right I think I'm gonna leave it there for today I hope you enjoyed today's video I know it was just a Q&A but I am trying to work on my parents to do a how to tell your parents about self-harm but we've just been like my parents have just been so busy that they haven't got around to do it and they're not very comfortable being on camera so I have to figure out how I'm gonna do it but that's gonna be a video hopefully coming up soon um, I really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and Definitely please comment, definitely please, definitely please comment something that you're grateful for because it would really mean a lot to me. Yeah, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Stay safe and I will see you soon.